Uh, I wonder if everybody can hear me. I only see like four people on. It's like 28. So I'm going to give it a little bit more time. Okay, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, great. Thank you, Leslie. I was wondering, like, what is going on? I didn't know what was going on. But this is new. Me setting up two different um, cameras is new. Well, actually, it's one camera, but I'm doing it on my laptop and on my phone 
because I have a little angel who took my laptop to play Roblox and it fell off his bed. So I have a broken laptop that is not even a year old. And it was my last year's birthday gift and my birthday is coming up again. So I'm not happy about that. But it is what it is and I'm going to try to do what I have to do. Now, um, I only still see four people. I'm going to uh, give you guys like two or three more minutes to get your materials. Um, I'm going to show three different ways to do the Grafgan hats. And in the three different ways, um, it the size of your hook depends on the type of hat that you're going to do. So I hope I'm not going to confuse you, but I'm going to start off with the basic and then I'm going to end up with um, something that's a little bit more difficult. And hopefully you guys can get that. Maybe you want to write it down or um, I'm definitely going to add more um, information to the group. That way you can see it and go back to it. But yeah, so... Let me get some water. Let me get like a half a second. Wait a minute. Yeah. Um, come back in one minute. Get some water. I'm giving you guys a little bit more time because I only see four people. And I, I want to be able to start. It's not going to be two hours. This is not two hours long. I just added the five to seven. This is not going to be two hours long. It It may not even be an hour. So... Just give me a minute and I'll be right back. I still don't see nobody online with me, but if you guys are having problems, um, let me know so that I can um, send you another invite. Let me see. Maybe it's something that I have to do. Uh, I look like my mama. Like you guys don't know my mom, but I look like her. I look just like her. Mm -mm -mm. 
Okay. To start off with a regular single crochet, it's just a regular single crochet um, hat. You have to make sure you have the measurements. We're going to do a female hat because um, that's basic. That's basic and it's in between child and it's in between man. So actually depending on what type of hook you use, it depends on um it depends on your size as well. So you always have to, you know, make sure what size hook you're gonna use. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see, let's see. Hi, everybody. It's only five more people. Um, hi, Diana, Leslie, Valley, Tracy. How are you guys? Let me, Valley, I'm just trying to send you, um, I got your email, so I'm trying to send you an invite. Uh, that's if you want to go online with me. If you want to go online with me, you can um, give me your email address and I'll send you the invite. But um, my road dog is not going to be able to be on here with me today because she has to work. But it's okay. I, I'm a big girl. I could do this by myself. So the main thing of uh, um, doing a graph scan, any type of graph scan, you need to start off with a graph. So once you decide what type of graph you're going to use, you need to make sure that it's a good graph. So I'm going to give you examples of good versus bad graphs, and you can see the differences in um why I stress so why I'm very particular about the graphs that we use and the reason why we don't accept anybody at all in our group to post certain um, graphs to show certain graphs because we put a lot of time and effort into to showing you guys what a, a decent graph look like now there's no written rule there's no bylaws or anything this is basically experience and through experience is how we decided these things were the best things to do when it came to graphs when you choose a graph you want to make sure that it's a clean clear copy of that pattern and you want to be able to see the image you want to see the details in the image you want to be able to um just be able to see that um image on your blanket because you are literally crocheting like a puzzle you're crocheting each square and it, making it into a picture so if you have certain lines that are not there certain details that is not there it may not look like a clean, crispy picture. It may look like the, the picture, but it's not going to be um, like quality. The difference is maybe if you have a picture in front of you that's like um, 3D versus 2D. I'm looking at it like that because looking at a quality graph that I may do versus somebody who's still learning you can see that it's the same exact picture. It's the same exact image. But when you really like look close, you can see the image come to you when I do it or the people who I taught do it versus somebody who knew the image is not as crisp and clear as you may want it to be. Especially, like I said, when you crochet and you have the group and the jagged edges and when the and when you see those jagged edges 
as you crochet, those lines start to disappear. So it starts to look like a dot, like um, connect the dot puzzle without the connection. That's what it looks like. It looks like your line is not clean, it's not clear, and you have little holes in it. So I'm going to show you examples of that. And this is very important for the hat but you also use it for a graph scan or anything that you're gonna use a graph for. You use that um, example. So I'm gonna switch the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. And um, we'll show you exactly what I am trying to say. Mm -mm. I'm trying to switch the screen, but it's not letting me. Oh, here we go. Okay. So we are going to show you. Um, there it is. There we go. So if you see this, this is a Pokemon ball. And if you see these little lines around here, they're not connected. This is my biggest pet peeve for all of those who never took my class. This is my biggest pet peeve of a graph. Not having the lines connected. This is a connected um, picture of a graph that has all the lines connected. So what you want to do is when you search for your graphs, you want to make sure that those lines are connected, that you can see the detail. Let's, for instance, a lot of people are going on... Um, Pixel sites. So let's look up, um, say for instance, if we go on here and we find patterns and may say, oh, this is really cute. Um, we want to use that. The lines are not really connecting, so it would not be a good image. Let, let me try something better, like this the bird. If we was to crochet this, this right here will come out broken. The lines will come out broken. As you keep going and crochet each line, it's a, it's a jagged line. So the, the lines as you go, one row will go this um, to the left and then one row will go to the right. And when you do that, your lines tend to disappear with this as well. Like I, I, I don't... I can't even really tell what it is, but this is exactly how some people graphs are. Some people um, have um, graphs that may look good and the lines are connecting um, like this, like, you know, corner to corner because you want it to be round. Now, the thing about that is because you want it to be like a round area, it will tend to disappear in your crochet. So the best thing to do is connect those lines. So when you crochet, it'll flow a little bit more solid and the lines won't look um, so jagged. Examples of that. Examples of... Um, Sorry about that. Examples of um, crocheted items that don't look right. I can show you um, my work. I think I um, I think I posted it today actually, but I, I'm gonna show you my work. I'm not gonna show you anybody else's. My work is. Um,
from now to um, back in the days, you definitely see a difference. You definitely see a difference in my work. Okay, here we go. So when I first started, this is um, some of the things when I first started. Now, like I was saying, when you have these lines that do not connect, they tend to disappear like this. When you look at it, you could barely see the letters. You could barely see um, what it says. At the time, I thought it was just the bomb. I just thought it was the fitness. I, I thought it was really good at the time. I mean, it's a, it's pretty, but it's not. It's not pretty. I'm not going to lie. It's not pretty. It's really not. I think that the, the main issue here is those lines and a good graph would turn something like this into something a little bit more of a masterpiece. So like I said, it it's depending on the graph, this, depending on your graph. Now, this is what I was telling you about with the jagged lines. This is not a solid line. Um, the, these right here are not solid lines. And you could tell that, um, the name is not a solid line either. So that's something that you guys need to um, consider. In here, I don't know what I was trying to do. I really don't. I can't even tell you. I think I was trying to put the initials in there. I really can't tell you. But um, that's the problem with a lot of people who are doing their graph scans. That's what happened. We see it, but we don't see it. Kind of like the example that I was giving you. We kind of see what something is there. We just don't know exactly what it is. Because I did it and I can't even tell you what it is. I really don't know. I thought I was doing something though. But um, yeah. So that's examples. I, I really needed you to understand how much of a um, difference it is to have a good grad versus somebody who Hola. Hola. How art thou? Anybody else on? They just watching. They're not on live. Oh. I don't know how many, but I just know they're on live. I'm in the car. I see. <laughs> Hi, Pisces twin. <laughs> just got off of work. I just got Aww. Yes. All right. I'm explaining good graphs and bad graphs. So this right here is a hat. I thought I was doing something, but I really wasn't. It's horrible. Um, the graph was um, something that I think I did on my own. And... It was like single lines. So because I did it on my own with graph paper and the single lines, it really did not come out nice at all. So that is something that you do not want your hat to come out. The graphs that I did for every single one, and that's the reason why I had asked for everybody to have a graph from me, not Two in my horn, but two in my horn. But everybody should have a graph for me so that they can see the differences in work. Uh, okay. So I'm going to, um, this is what I did already. I did a hat with like that already. I started it with a regular um, single crochet. So there is a lady, um, she has a website, and um, I think her um, name is um, Hookie, Hookie Hooks or Hookie Designs, Playing Hookie, Playing Hookie Designs. She has something um, online with a website where 
it's um, graph hats. It's hats with a bunch of graphs on it. So let me um, switch the camera so that you guys can see closer what I'm doing. So this is basically, um, this is basically what I started out doing. I realized that it's not going to come out right. So if you can see here at the bottom, it's supposed to say F-A, it's hashtag F-A-V. This is what the cus customer wanted. The customer wanted um, F-A-V because her sister and her always call each other fave, favorite sister. So I had added this, which is the um, spin for brain aneurysm because her sister passed and the hashtag at the bottom. Now, I follow the method that Playing Hooky Designs had. Now, I will give you the link of it. You could do it because I did it. Um, with my OES hat, I did an OES hat. I have the picture in the group. That one came out nice, and maybe because the line, the um, the letters were solid. So being that the letters were solid, it came out really nice. When I tried to do this with it, it did not come out nice at all because you can't really see the letters. If you look at it, it it doesn't look good at all. And I think mainly because her hats have, um, is ribbed. Her hats are all ribbed. So this is one method of um, how to make a hat. Like I said, I'll give you the link because they, they are paid patterns. So I couldn't give you the actual pattern because this is a paid pattern. But I will give you the link to her website where she has different graphs. I I can't say yay or nay if I would buy all of her graphs. But she does have the actual um, pattern. Now, her pattern basically is single crochet in the back loop. And the last five is sip, sip. That's why it's like... um smaller at the top and larger at the bottom so that at the end when you finish crocheting all you're doing is stitching the top up at, uh, and i don't like that look but um depending on how you do it because like i said my oes hat came out really nice so depending on how you stitch it up at the top it should come out nice but yeah this this method is to me a no no but only for certain graphs. This type of graph is not good for this. With the being because it's ribbed, you can see like the stitches inside of the ribbed area, and I think that's where the my issue had came about because the ribbon came out fine. The ribbon is actually fine. It. It's more so of the letters that I had a problem with at the bottom. But this is one method that you could definitely use. And it's really easy. I will give you the link. And you can purchase her pattern. I think it's $5 or $7. And you could do it this way. The way that you... Um, the other way that you can do uh hat is regular single crochet so you start at the top and when you start at the top you do it as a regular beanie and the regular beanie is um i think i i left the um the link to a basic beanie you have the basic beanie and you follow the basic um in making the um the, the purple Make sure you have the flat circle. Your flat circle is supposed to fit at the circumference of the top of your head. And you want to make sure that it fits the crown of your head. So once it fits the crown of your head, you don't have to keep increasing anymore. You can um
Okay. So you don't have to, um, you can measure. Like I always have my measuring tape and I use the, the measurement and the sizes that I had posted in the, the group. And, and it comes down to doing that circle. I would measure it with this to, to come out with the size that I want, whether it's for a baby or a child, um, teen, uh, adult women or adult men. It's all there. I gave all those sizes there. So to start the regular single crochet beanie, um, you're just doing a basic beanie. I'm not teaching you guys how to do a basic beanie. I'm not showing you guys how to do that. You guys should know how to do a basic beanie. The basic beanie is basically, um, you're going to follow the steps for that basic beanie all the way up until your last increase. Your last increase should be around, I believe it's like around row five or six. So once you do your increase and then your next um, rolls are just straight up single crochet all the way down, that's where you're going to start your graphs. When you start your graphs, being that you're going in the round, you are going to um, take all the colors that you need. Where you going? You can either put it on a bobbin or like me, I just pull it out and just let it hang. You could do it that way or you can do it in a way where... Um, no, I said three. You have... Um, I'm muting you, Gail. I'm over. You do it in a way where any way that's comfortable for you. Just make sure you have all of your colors. This one had three colors. So I just took out the three colors. I took out the three colors and I just let it hang. I I don't use bobbins. It's just too much to do. I, I don't do bobbins at all. But you could the bobbins for um a hat is a to me a little bit more difficult. So I don't even bother with it. Um one second. I'm not I'm getting messages while I'm online. I'm sorry. I don't know what the messages are. So we're going to, I'm going to show you how I did my, um, okay. I'm going to show you how I did mine and how you're going to read the graph, the direction that you have to read the graph. And, um, it's going to be kind of difficult, but I'm going to show you. It's, I'm going to show you the right way. So the first one that we're going to do is the um, regular single crochet. The regular single crochet is going to be, let's see, in the round. Give me one second. I left one thing. Give me one second.
Sorry about that. I had to get had to get the hat. It's hard this. All right. So this is the one that I had did. And this is the one that I was telling you about the um, bottom where it says fave, F-A-V. This is, um, you can see it clearer here versus the other one. You couldn't see it so clear. You can see the differences in the hats. You can see the difference between this one and this one. You can see it a little better. So I just wanted to show you that. But the um the round, I had to go around. So basically, if you do a basic beaning and you're gonna do it for a woman's size, your basic beanie is gonna start off with um eight. You do a magic, um, I don't I don't do a magic, um, the, what is it? The magic circle. I don't really do that. I don't know really how you do it. It always comes out wrong when I do it. Let me see. I'm trying to show you guys. The basic beanie. The basic beanie. I think I put it in um in the group for you guys. I tried to do all of that before we got on here so that you could see it before I got on here. Basic beanie. The basic beanie is um free, so I I am putting it in there for all of you guys because that's free. That I can show you the link for. Now with the basic beanie, um with, I'm going to pull it now in the um, comments. The basic beanie that I am um, doing is um, for all sizes. Oh, wait. I'm just realizing you guys wasn't seeing the graph that I was talking about. I'm, oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. Oh, man. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to show it again. I'm going to show it again because I'm going to show you how, which way to do, to use the graph. But the, um, I just, I just put in the group chat the, um, link for the, the link for the pattern. I'm also going to put it in the group. So that you guys can um, look at it. Mm -mm. I'm going to do that now so that you guys can have it. Basic beanie. Basic beanie. Okay, so that's in there if you guys want to um, take a look at that and how we started. Um, it's really simple. The simplest thing ever. Now, for that, she is using the um, hook eye, which is... Um, like a good choice for this type of um, beanie. She also has measurements as well. Um, it's just about the same measurement sizes that I use. 
Yeah, it's just about the same that I use. And she also shows you how to measure. And she shows you how um, to measure the circumference, which is the crown that measures the top of your head and um, the height for, for all sizes. So this is a really good site for you guys um, to look at for the basic single crochet um, beanie, not not for the the one that I'm gonna teach you. I'm sorry, this is um this is not single crochet. This is double crochet, but I changed it to single crochet. So in place of double crochet, I was using um, single crochet. Which the difference is I'm just adding more rows. Um, because double crochet, your rows get a little bit larger. Single crochet is um smaller. So that's what I I do. I just add a little bit more rows. With my hat patterns, my graphs, they all are different um sizes based on the image. So you have to think about whether or not that is going to fit a man size, a child size, a woman size. You have to see if that image is going to fit based on the sizes that I provided already. This, um, this one that I did is a woman's hat. The size that I did for this is, uh, 27 by 27. So it's 27 rows. And, it, and the, the largest part is 27 stitches. So 27 by 27 is the area that we need, it, which is a woman's hat. So this is one of the largest um, graphs that I have, one of the largest. So I, this is just to show you the area of... Um, that you're gonna need, the area that you're gonna need for your image. This is um, a woman, she had a big head, but I did a woman size. And what I did was um, just use the measurements that I already have, the sizes, and use what is in the basic beanie and just add it a little a couple of rolls. That's all I did. Added a couple of more rolls um, so that it can be able to fit the graph and be longer because you're not going to be using double crochet. You're going to be using single crochet. Now, I do have, a, if, if that confuses somebody, I do have a single crochet. Um, I will post that as well. Single crochet graph for anyone who may be confused about that. I will definitely post that. There's a free one and it's really clear. I just like this one because she shows you the measurements of the crown and the measurements of the height. And I just I just like the detailed um message that she has. Um why did you no, man. <laughs> I, I think it's just me and you live, Gail. That's all. It's just me and you live. Yeah. Oh, you can't talk. Oh. Um. You muted. You muted yourself? You must unmute yourself. I don't know what happened. She must have mute, muted herself. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing, Gail. But anyway, so the single crochet, you just follow the, the basic beanie. And I'm going to show you how you're going to do the, um, how you follow the graph. Once you get to row, let me see. And the. Uh, Can you hear me? 
I hear you now. I muted myself because I was. But I said grocery noise. Okay. Yeah, but I was trying to see was anybody on. Because <laughs> I didn't you see any names see. in the group part. I saw you. Oh, good. Yeah, that's all I see. Um, but I don't even see Betty on here. I just see her in the hangout part, but I don't see her on here. But they could do this I don't later. Know. Um, I see. Um, everybody else that I see is basically just watching. Nobody is on live with us. Just everybody okay. else is watching. Okay, I'm sorry. Continue on. I'm about to take the grocery mm -hmm. sandwich. All right. So, um, okay. So the basic beanie, once you get to row, uh, once you get to the row 10, that's what it is, 10. Once you get to row 10, that's, is, that's when you're going to start doing your um, graph. Because up to 10 is like 68 to 70 um, stitches around. And that's the size of a woman, uh, 68 to 70. I use 70. 70 stitches going around, that fits a woman's size head. So once you do all your increasing, and your increase in stops at roll at round 10. 11 on is where you're gonna start doing your um your um graph. Again, like I said, when you do this pattern, you're gonna have to add more um rows. Now, the only thing about the pattern is there's only but so many rows you're going to add. You're not going to add 12 or 20 more rows to your graph. And it's going to end up like this big. You, you don't want to do that. What you want to do is use a, um, a smaller needle then. So instead of using the I, you would use like a G or H. This way when you crochet, you're crocheting um, smaller. That way it'll fit. Your graph will fit. Your um, your rows won't look as large as it would be if you use a larger needle. So that's basically, like I said in the beginning, it depends on the hook that you use makes a difference in the size. Like when they tell you to check your gauge, I never check my gauge. I never do it. But when you check your gauge, um, it tells you basically with your crochet tension, the way you, um, whether you crochet hard, which I crochet real hard, or soft, or um, if you use uh, I or G or whatever, F, your gauge changes. So with this basic beanie um, single crochet, I would definitely use a smaller hook. If you have a graph that's not too big and it's maybe 10 rolls, you could use a, a, the eye. The eye won't the eye won't hurt it. Um, it would be a good size still. But if you the ribbon that I have being that it's kind of large, it's kind of long, I would definitely go down at least a hook or two. I will go down to that is what makes the difference. So make sure <clears throat> I don't know if you guys are writing it down. Once you stop at the increase, that's when you're going to start your graph. You start your graph from that point on. Hey, when you yeah. go down a hook or two with that hat, would it make it smaller if they crochet tight? That's what I wanted to ask. If that if you I crochet down, real tight, still, and you yeah, I crochet really, really, really tight. 
it didn't really, you know why? It didn't change anything only because I added a couple of more roles to it anyway. So what I that added was an H. You did an H. I did a G. Oh, okay. And then you, I, I did a G. That's why I look like this, and it looks like it's also um, knitted, too. But I, I'll show you how to get to how to, How it has the knitted look. When your um, stitches are tiny and small, it gives that knit look effect. That look good. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, that's um <laughs> that's what I did. I, I used the um G hook. So the G hook is um really small, it's really tiny because at first I didn't want to use it, but I realized the pattern that I was gonna follow, it it wouldn't um fit the whole entire image. So I had to improvise and I had to use a smaller hook so I could fit this long um, image. So basically it's ba is using common sense. This is using common sense in how you make your head. That's basically what it is, common sense. The, other, the other way is the stitches. It depends on the stitch that you use. The stitch that you use, it could be um, single crochet. You could use split single crochet. Split single crochet is also waistcoats and knit, the knit stitch. Waist stitch and knit stitch. Split single crochet is basically single crochet but you're splitting it. So um, the stitches look like knit. That's what this is, split single crochet. So the split single crochet is basically, like I said, the single crochet. It just makes the hat look a little bit more like it's knitted. Not, um, not, um, like a regular single crochet looks. The single crochet looks good, but you want to, a lot of hats are knitted and it, and that's the effect that we want to do as crocheters that don't want to knit. Because I can if I really wanted to, I just don't, it's too long, it takes forever. So I think that this is a good way to make it look like it's knit and then, you could do it quickly. The next thing, before I get into how I do it, um, that's another version. The next thing is, besides the stitches that you need to um, pay attention to, another um, technique is the front post and back post. I don't really like that, but it's something that you guys might want to consider. I, I um I think I, I put a picture in the group. So basically it's a thicker texture, but your image will have to be really tiny. I don't really like it, but you guys may like it. So it might be it could be something like you, a lot of you guys like um, corner to corner, which to me, I don't like because it's a yarn guzzler and it doesn't show a lot of detail because if you put all the detail, it's going to end up really huge. That's exactly what the front post and back post um, single crochet does with the hat. I, I really don't like it. I, I can show you how it looks, but I really don't like it. It doesn't look good to me. So I don't um I don't use it. But it's an it's something maybe if you wanna just do it to have fun, you could do it.
Um, cause front post. Yeah, I did. I put it. I put this in. Um, I put it all in the um the group for you guys. It is um. Not cute to me. Where is it? Where did it go? I hope you guys are keeping up because I'm going to show you my little technique in a few seconds. How I do my little technique. Okay, here it is. Let me show you. I do not like it. I do not like it. Let me change the screen. Oh man, I wish I can not do this. Here we go. I wish I didn't have to use this. I wish I could use my laptop, Elijah. <laughs> but anyway, here it is. This is um the front post. Um, this is how the graph beanie looks with the front post. I don't like it. It's okay, but again, it'll be um very thick. The texture will be very thick, and um, you would need like a small image. But um, some of you guys can do it. If if that's what you want to do, I'll give you the link. I'll give you the link to that. This is another one. Um, I to each his own. I don't like it. But if, you know, if anybody wanted to try a textured um, beanie, I'll be more than happy to send you the link. I will send you the link for that. It's not my cup of tea, but you guys may like it. So that's um, another stitch. And then you have... Um, So then you have um, single crochet, split single crochet, front post, and um, HDC. Half double crochet is another one that I do. Half double crochet is basically the same as the single crochet, except for it makes your um, hat a little bit larger. So that's... The stitches that you may want to consider based on those stitches um you just have to um keep in mind of your um your size and the hook that you use that's it that's that's basically what it is with those stitches just make sure you um pay attention to the um size now let's get to the meat of the of what we came here for. How do you put the graph on here? After you finish your um, increase, once you finish your increase and you're ready to start your graph, that's the part I'm going to show you. I'm going to um, use the um, awareness ribbon. And the awareness ribbon is... Um, 27 by 27 so I'm going to definitely use that and how I'm going to do it is in the round I'm going to show you how to do it in the round now this is single crochet single crochet let me um, change the screen so that I'm going to show you how, to, how you're going to use your um, graph 
the graph is going to be from top to bottom. So you're going to start it from the top to the bottom with the regular single crochet basic beanie um, pattern. That's one method. I'm going to show you how you do it. One second. Let me change it, the screen. I really, really wish I had a camera on here, but it's, I'm making do with what if. Okay, so when you do, I, do everybody see this? Everybody seeing the, um, I hope everybody can see. Okay, so basically we're going to start up here at the top. It's going to be, this is going to be the first row. And you have two colors for your first row. You have three on one side and two on the other side. So you're going to make sure you have your two colors. So Keep in mind, you have um, 70, or, well, 68, 68 stitches in the round. So because you have 68 stitches in the round, you're going to use 27 of those stitches. All I do is start off with 20 single crochets. You start with 20 single crochets. 20 single crochets until you get to the middle. And you just crochet all the way till you get to the middle. And once you get to your middle, uh, I'm going to do 20. Single crochet. And 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Once you get to that 20, we're going to hold it. We're going to change colors. I hope everybody knows how to change colors. So basically, I left two... Um, two stitches on the hook. This is the 20th stitch. So the 21st is where I'm going to start my graph. And I'm going to take my first color. I'm going to use the orange and I'm going to put it on here. All I do is just slip it on there and complete the single crochet. I drop that main color. I do not carry no more than five. So if it was two stitches, I would carry it over. Three, I would carry it over. Even four stitches, I would carry it over. Being that it's five stitches, is three of one color and two of the other color, I will not carry. So I'm going to do three single crochets. One, two, 
and three. Now, we need to change that to the next color. The next color I'm gonna put white. And we're gonna complete it. We're gonna put this on the hook and complete your single crochet. I'm going to drop that color and go and complete the single crochet. So here we have the first part of the graph and that is three of the orange and three and two of the white. So that's the first row of your graph. Then we're gonna go to the next, back to the, um, we're gonna go back to the um, other side. I hate when this happens. This is stuck. <sighs> We're going to go back to the main color. So we're going to pull out a new one because we're dropping. We dropped that old one. Remember? We dropped the main, the main color right here and we left it right there. We started the new color and we dropped it and left that there. Then we started the white, and we drop that and left that right there. That is gonna be sitting there and waiting for us to come back to it. So now we take this, where did you go? Here we go. So now we take this new background color and hook it on and complete our single crochet. Every single loose string, we're going to crochet over it. When you do this, make sure you're tugging down and make sure that it, it's in there tight and snug. I have a method called um, like pop and lock and drop it. <laughs> So that's my method. You pop it, you lock it, and you drop it. You do your single crochet. I do something called extended single crochet when only when I'm changing colors. So being that I am changing colors with this, I'm going to do my pop, lock, and drop it method. You put this on a hook. You complete your single crochet. And you're gonna go in. You have two on the hook and you're gonna yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. So basically that's all you're doing is go in, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. That's my pop lock and drop it method. I do that only when I'm changing colors. The rest, I'm just going to do a single crochet, regular single crochet. The reason why I do the extended single crochet is because I, where you changing your colors, you want it to um, look clean and crisp when you change your colors. And it locks it in there so that it, it doesn't get loose or anything, especially for those who crochet a little loose. You don't want it to look loose because if it looks loose, you can see the other colors. You don't want that to happen. So I only do it only when I'm changing um, colors. That's, when, that's what I do. So now, you know, you go all the way around, all the way around till you hit where you last got off at so that you could do your next um round so like i was saying your um graph 
for this way, for the basic beanie, you're starting at the top. So being that you're starting at the top, I would definitely do um, um, a smaller hook because if you do the smaller hook, you could be able to fit all those rolls being that it's 20, 27. Yeah, it's about 27 rolls. So, um, there it is. You guys can use, um, like some people use, a uh, um, what you call it? The, um, stitch marker. You could use a stitch marker to put in a place so that you don't, um, lose your spot. But you also want to make sure that your hat, the inseam of your hat, doesn't go crooked. I'm going to show you that too. Because if your inseam goes crooked, then your graph may go crooked. And you don't want to do that. So I have stitch markers. So I would put the stitch marker in that first right here and that first stitch. So the first stitch you have um, that chain one, the stitch marker is gonna go into the stitch, not the chain one. Um, okay, so now that I'm around, Back over here again, I am going to take my stitch marker out and I am going to do a slip stitch in the chain one. Take my chain one and do a slip stitch. That's then you do chain one and turn. So when you turn, we're not necessarily going all the way around. We're going from your point A to point B and then B to A, and then we're gonna keep going back around. So basically you're turning your work. You're turning it around. So you're gonna go back this way again. You're not going to keep going around. You're just going, you're turning it around and going back. So you do your chain one. And then you put your. Uh, you put your stitch marker there and your chain one. And then you keep going. With your single crochet. Now. The. Um, I gave you guys your graphs in case you wanted to start your hat or wanted to look at your graph. And if you guys have any questions or anything, this is the perfect time to ask um, while I'm doing this part. You guys can ask that question that you may have. And I can answer it or repeat something if you wanted me to repeat it. The um, Before I do that, I'm going to uh, Yeah, you see the graph. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you the graph again so that you can see what um, the next step is. The next step in the graph. Okay, so we did this part. We did row one. Next, we're going to do row two. So... We go all the way around back. It's going to end up on this side. 
It's going to end up right here. So basically, you're going to go from, what is it, left to right? It'll be my, it'll be my, um, my left. And then, yeah, it'll be from left to right and then right to left, left to right, right to left. Each line is going to, um, change. And then this one, when you go to this row, you're going to go, you're going to start it on going this way. And then you're going to start this row from this way. So each row it depends on um, if you're going to go left to right or right to left. So the second line, we're going to start the light pink one stitch before this next one. So you're going to have three of the light pinks and four of the dark pink. And I'm going to show you how I go about doing that. How do I add it, you say? Okay, so. Okay, so back <clears throat> to here. We're going to get to that last, the last stitch before our color change, we're gonna drop it, drop the background color. We're going to pick up the white, add it into our stitches, complete the stitch. We're gonna do our pop, lock, and drop it method. Yarn over, go through one, yarn over, go through two. And then we're going to go through the next one and then the next one. And then we stop there, drop that, pick up the orange. Once you pick up the orange, you do the same thing. You complete the single crochet, pull down, pull down on that white, pop, lock, and drop it method. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. And then you keep going with your single crochet. Single crochet. Single crochet. Drop that, because we had to do four orange, four orange. Pick up your background color. Complete your single crochet. Pull down on that, pop, lock, and drop it method. Go into your stitch, yarn over, pull up two loops, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Then you're going to continue all the way till you get to the beginning, your stitch marker again. So at this point, anybody have any questions? So this is, um, like I said, regular single crochet. I'm going to show you what I did in the split single crochet um, that I did in this hat. But um, So now we make it back here to the stitch marker. And we are going to take the stitch marker out, slip stitch in the in the chain, and we're going to chain one and turn. Turn like a book, like you're turning a page in a book. That's what my aunt used to always tell me: turn like you're turning a page in a book. And then you're going back around again single crochet all the way over. But we're gonna do the next row in split single crochet so that I can show you how to do a split single crochet. The split single crochet is what I did on this. 
So um, with the split single crochet, I would definitely use a smaller hook. The smaller hook helps so much. Um, let me get a smaller hook. My favorite um, hook that glides in and out is the clover. It glides in and out and I could be able to crochet fast. So this is what I use is the clover. So this is a um, F. You don't have to use an F. You could use something um, like a G or an H. This is, I was using the H, but um, this is an F. I used a uh, G for this. I used G. Um, okay, so the split single crochet, all you're doing is going in the middle of the crochet stitch. So, you know, I don't know if you guys can see, but uh, I don't know if you can see with this. Maybe I used the wrong yarn. I used black. Um, well, let me show you. In this orange, you can see that it's two loops right here. And you see the V. You see that V? That's where you're going to stick your hole in. That's what you're going to stick the um, hook in. In between the V. So it looks like a V right here. That's where you're going to stick it in. That's for the split single crochet. The split single crochet is basically splitting the single crochet up. So, you do that all around, all around, all, in every last stitch, you're going to do that. Oh, this was the worst color in the world to use. Oh, man. <laughs> what did I do to myself? Oh, geez. Okay, so, yeah, you, you go in the middle of each. Jeez. I don't know why I did this to myself. I guess because I had extra. Okay. So... I don't know why I did this to myself. So the next um line, the next line, um, I'm basically going to have to add a color. So I'm going to show you what the graph look like, and then we're going to add the color. Okay, so we're doing this third row. So we're going from left to right. So we're gonna go, we're gonna have one, two, three, four, four of um, the dark. Then we're gonna add another um, white. Then we're gonna have four of the light. So keep in mind, we're still doing the, uh, we're doing the split, the split single crochet. So I'm going to get to the split. So we're doing four dark pink, one white, and four light pink. 
and then the rest is going to be the background. Okay. So we're going to add white. We're going to add white. So we're going to prepare for that. Pop lock and drop it method because we're going to change. Because we're going to pick up, pick up the orange. Complete the single crochet. Pull down on it. Pop lock drop method. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and then one, two, you got two. But remember, you're doing in between, in between those Vs. So we got four orange. Um... You know what? I just realized something. The middle is not going to be white. The middle is going to be the background color, which is this color. Yeah. The middle. I don't know what's going on with this yarn. What happened to it? Okay. We're going to add that one white piece, which is the background color. Put it on here. Complete your single crochet, pop, lock, and drop it method. Make sure you do your split single crochet in between the stitches. Then you're going to go through one, then drop it because now you're going to add the next, the next ones. Complete that. We're going to pull down on that. And we're going to do pop lock and drop it method. And then you're going to complete it in between in between the stitches man i don't know what okay now at times it could be very 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 tedious it can be very tedious um it depends on how tight you crochet cuz i told i crochet tight so it depends on how tight you crochet you don't want to crochet too tight okay so i just had to do four of the white in between and pick up this background color complete it pull down pop lock and drop method in between Keep going in between your stitches. Now, if you crochet tight like I do, um, try not to because you're going to be doing what I'm doing. And the black, I used, I had to use black with that and I had to use the light to put down on it because my eyes was going crazy. So that's basically... Um, how I do it. You go around and then back around. So basically you're doing it in not the round, but rolls. You're doing it in rolls and you're closing it up so it could be in the round, but you're really not going all the way around. You're not doing 360. I hope I didn't confuse you. Uh, anybody have any other questions? If not, cool. The same with this method. 
Um, she gives um, playing hooky designs. She gives um, a good. Um, it's a good um, directions on how she does this, and basically you just follow the the method on how she do it, but. That's the ribs mesh method, and she does hers in, um, like in rolls like this, and then at the end she closes it up and stitches it up at the top. This way, when you do it this way, it's already done at the top, is already stitched in. You have that nice, um, clean top, and then your 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 bottom will be your image, and then you could put um. Um, like a roll of single crochet, or you could put ribs um, in there, which is the front post or back post method. And one other thing that I did do, um, what I did do is I added this at the bottom first and I worked my way up. So I did the image from the bottom up. So you could do it that way as well. Instead of doing it from the top down, you could do it from the bottom up. And that's what I did this. I did this in bottom up. I did the ribbed part, which was five single crochets. And then I did in the back loops all the way around 70. I did 70 all the way around. I closed it up and then I did single crochet around and then I did the split single crochet um all the way I did the split single crochet for like five was it five no two I did two rows of single crochet split single crochet and then I started my graph basically all I did was 20 rows in after you um you start 20 you do 20 not rows 20 stitches and then you start your graph that's all I do is 20 stitches and then I start my graph and once you do that it'll all fall into, fall into place and so I did this from the bottom up once I got to the top I would decrease my stitches I decreased and I have a um a video for decreasing this the split single crochet and all the way up until you can't decrease no more. I didn't even have to stitch it. Yeah, I did. I stitched it at the top. If you see right here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's my um, line right here. It's clean and it's straight. Just follow that method of um, what I posted. It's in the documents. And um, basically, either follow that or you can follow your own method for keeping your straight seam. The seam is straight. When you do hats, that's basically what you want to do is do, is do that. And to put the pom-pom on, I um, this pom-pom has um, the loop. It's like an elastic loop. And I put the elastic loop on... With the string, with the um yarn, I just have to um weave it in, um uh, like a lot of times, just kept weaving it, weaving it, weaving it in until um it stayed on there, and that's basically it. That's basically the method of what I do. Um, there's um that's basically what you need to do when it comes down to doing a hat. So if you have any questions, leave it in the group. I'll answer your questions, whatever you have. Um, let me know if you have any other issues that you come across. If you need me to do anything else, let me know. If you want me to show something, and I'll do a, a quick video and show you how I do it. But that's basically it, what it is. Basically what it is to do a hat. You're basically following a basic um structure of making a hat just adding the image it's just the way you add the image what stitches you're going to use and what method you're going to use it um if you're going to go from top to bottom or bottom to top left to right right to left 
it's your preference. It's based on what you want. So I hope you wrote all of that down. And thank you for being on tonight. And talk to you guys later. Have a good night. Bye.